this border. This is an invasion. And then on top of this new decision from a district judge yesterday, a district court judge stating about the uh, they are allowed to have weapons. You know, if you have 10 million people coming to your country and now they can uh, have the right to bear arms. Mm. Now we've got an armed potential. Uh, what else can we call it? But an invasion. Yeah. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a case that is moving through the court system in Ohio, specifically a federal case that looks at whether or not an illegal alien can be in possession of a firearm. Many of you may remember that I did another video dealing with illegal aliens and guns several months ago. There was a case in Chicago where a U.S. district judge, an Obama-appointed U.S. district judge, dismissed the case against the illegal alien, claiming that 18 U.S.C. 922, as it relates to illegal aliens being in possession of a firearm, was unconstitutional as applied to him, using Bruin as the standard. In Ohio, we have a similar case, although the facts are a little bit different. We'll go into that in a second. In this particular case, the district judge, who was a Clinton appointee, says, no, absolutely not. The case can continue to move forward. There is no constitutional violation. All right, so the case is USA v. Carlos Sorano Restepo. All right, and I'm probably butchering his name, and uh, Mr. Sorano Restepo, if I have, I apologize. In any event, this particular defendant comes illegally into the United States in the early part of the 2000s and then begins a system of seeking asylum here in the United States. He makes himself known. He is not trying to hide within the you know shadows of society. He files his proper paperwork looking for asylum. The United States government says, yeah, okay, you can stay here. You're going to need to file all these subsequent you know, identifiers and all about these different types of things. Um, and he's going through the process. During this time, he decides to start a business and evidently becomes quite successful. He ends up then moving from Arizona to Ohio. While in Ohio, he decides that he wants to start exercising his Second Amendment rights, begins a process of collecting firearms, at least from what I've been able to gather, he had somewhere around 170 firearms. He is then subsequently targeted by ATF and is prosecuted for being an illegal alien in possession of firearms in violation of 18 U.S.C. 922. Um, he files a challenge to this saying, uh, nope, my Second Amendment rights under Bruin uh, essentially make the imposition of the statute invalid. And the U.S. District Judge told him to go pound sand, that the trial can continue. So let's first talk about the underlying philosophy of the Second Amendment. And I know I've discussed this before, and I'll be honest with you, when I've seen some of the comments on these videos, I can see a lot of hostility, and I get it, all right? But we're going to be academic for a second. We're not going to be political. The Second Amendment, like all the other amendments in the Constitution, have to come from something. They don't come from government. And you guys have probably heard this statement before. The Constitution does not grant a single right. The Constitution recognizes pre-existing rights. The Second Amendment to the Constitution, just like the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, existed before the ratification. Now, that begs the question, where do rights come from? Are they just some form of a social construct? If they are, we're screwed. Because if our rights are totally dependent upon who happens to be seated in power at any given time, then you have no rights. You simply are living under the largesse of a dictatorship. Rights need to come from something that is transcendent. Some would refer to that as the creator. 
Some would refer to that as Gaia. Some would refer to that as God. Some would refer to that as the Pastafarian spaghetti monster. I really don't care, all right? But the fact of the matter is, rights need to come from something beyond mere mortals. So, this particular individual says, look, it makes no theological sense for the Creator to only grant rights to certain people who happen to live within a political construct in a place called North America, right? After all, these rights are transcendent. They are human rights. And since I have a human right of being in this particular country at this particular time, um, I have a Second Amendment right. And as a result, I should be allowed to bear arms. The judge disagrees. Now, what's interesting is the argument that the judge uses. And this is the first time that I've seen this argument used. And it's candidly very, very problematic. So the judge is Judge Edmund Sagaris, and he makes the argument that the 18 U.S.C. 922, as it relates to illegal aliens being in possession of firearms, actually falls within Bruin. He says, look, you know, with Bruin, we have a two-step analysis. We start off by saying, does the individual have a abrogation of their Second Amendment rights in this particular case? They say, yes, it does, right? So now the burden shifts to the state, and the state has to show how this this law is consistent with our nation's history, text, and firearms regulatory traditions that existed in 1791. And the judge says, okay, well, in 1791, we didn't actually have any sorts of immigration policies. People could come to the United States at any time for whatever reason. And there were no restrictions on these people being able to acquire firearms. So if we're looking for a law back in 1791 that is identical to the 18 U.S.C. 922 that prohibits an illegal alien from having a firearm, well, we're simply not going to find it. But we can look for analogous laws. And he said, ah, there were several places within the United States that said, if you're Catholic, you can't possess a firearm. Only Protestants can have firearms. Or if you're a Native American, or some other disavored class. Okay guys, so I'm gonna pause this video for just a second. USCCA, which sponsors these videos, they're doing a giveaway and it's really cool. You're gonna to wanna to get on it. You're gonna to wanna to get on it quickly. Um, you can read all about it in the description below this video, but like I said, don't let this one go by. All right, with that, let's go back to the video. Now, if you were Catholic, let's say, and you were to take the firearms away, the state were to take the firearms away from the Catholic, the Catholic could get them back. All they need to do is swear an allegiance to the state and say that the allegiance to the state is greater than that of the allegiance to the Pope. Um, yeah, and he says that this is sufficient to what we have today. So today, the reason he's going to deny the motion for uh, Mr. Serrano Rostero is not because he is an illegal alien. In reality, the reason he's denying the motion to dismiss is because Mr. Serrano Rostero has never sworn allegiance to the United States. Okay, this is problematic for several reasons. First of all, um, he says, well, the only way that you can swear allegiance to the United States is through a naturalization process. Uh, no, that's actually not the case. Uh, you could just simply make a dispositive statement that you've sworn an allegiance that has as much cosmological effect as going through a naturalization process. On top of everything else, you can be a resident alien, not, not an illegal alien. You could have gone through a process where you have a work visa or you know, you're a permanent resident. You have not sworn an allegiance to the United States, and yet you are still allowed 
to possess firearms. You can still go through the process legally. 18 U.S.C. 922 cannot be applied to you. In this particular case, they're saying, well, he didn't swear an allegiance. That, that doesn't make any logical sense. So in any event, it's an interesting case. And this is one of those things where you look at a, a, a court case and you say, you know, um, some of you may agree, this is, this is the correct conclusion. I don't want illegal aliens carrying guns. Other people that are more, you know, purists like me, it's sit there and say, okay, well, philosophically, this doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, you, you, whether you're a, you know, whether you're a resident of, of, of one country or a resident of another should have absolutely no dispositive effect. Now, if you are a threat to the United States, you could be designated as potentially an enemy combatant. There's all sorts of other things that you may be doing, which makes it illegal for you to possess a gun, not because you simply happen to be an illegal alien, you could prosecute somebody for a felony of being an illegal alien, and they now become federally prohibited from carrying a firearm. So there's there's sort of ways around it. And I want to be very clear on this. I'm not advocating for illegal aliens to carry guns, okay? What I am suggesting is that we need to be philosophically consistent on these things. Um, in any event, the case will continue. I think it'll actually be overturned on appeal because the uh, the judge's motion, you know, denial of a motion, uh, I think is is absolutely well. To be honest with you, I think it's completely frivolous. Anyways, with that being said, if you do want to email me, by all means, do so. You can email me at Stephen at ArtemisHQ.com. As always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.